Hey folks, it's William with All Solar Texas. If you've been considering going solar but have been shocked by the sticker price recently, well, that just tells you one thing, solar prices are going up. Now, why are they going up? Well, watch this video. I'll let you know what are all those cost factors that are driving the increase in price of solar and tell you what you could do about it. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for joining the channel, but before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell. That really helps us out with YouTube, gets our message out in front of more customers, and it does keep you up to date with all of the latest energy news that we produce here on the channel. Lastly, reach out to us, give us a call, send us an email, check out our website. We respond quickly and we can't wait to hear from you. Now, this year has been a rough year for solar prices, but it's also been a rough year for energy and, and power uh, rates uh, across the board. We've seen skyrocketing electric rates here in Texas, and then we've also seen a substantial uptick in the price of solar. So what is driving the uptick in the price of solar? The number one reason why solar prices are increasing is because of the federal increase in interest rates. The Fed to date has raised rates six different times. Now, if you compare that to where we were at at the beginning of 2022, depending upon when you're watching this video, we had solar loan options ranging from 0.99% on the low end with dealer fees, all the way up to a 4.99% loan option without dealer fees. Now, if you're not, not clear or, or, or if you don't understand what a dealer fee is, I will link a video below in the description that will uh, point you back to some other content where I go in a little bit more depth about solar loan options and dealer fees and, and what you need to look out for. Now that information is a little bit outdated because where we're sitting at in this point of the year, we have seen solar loan rates increase six times, right? Hand in hand with what we're seeing the Fed do. Now these solar loan companies will oftentimes raise rates very quickly and they give us very little to no warning. So we can't even reach out to customers and let them know about these uh, price hikes and these rate hikes. But now we're seeing sitting at a point in the year where our lowest interest solar loan is 2.99%. And that's still with high dealer fees from 27% of a dealer fee all the way up to 31% and above. And now we don't even have a no dealer fee option. So our highest interest rate is 6.99. And with some of the more popular solar loans out there, Mosaic, uh, Sunlight, Good Leap, you're really seeing an increase in those dealer rates as well that are ultimately gonna end up leading to a higher cost for your solar system if you choose to finance and a higher monthly payment. So first off, those federal uh, interest rate increases is what's driving the, the main uptick that we see in the cost of going solar. Now, what can you do to help offset that? Well, solar loans in general and the solar financing companies are typically the, the best option when you're looking to finance. They offer long terms like 25 year terms and historically pretty low interest rates, but that's not your only option. You can go and look into financing with your local bank or credit union. There's also other home improvement loans, which I'll link below. Uh, I found a really great article that kind of outlines all the different companies out there that you could look into if you're just trying to get a loan for a home improvement project in general, like a swimming pool or installing a spa or getting a new roof. It also includes options for solar. So feel free to check out those loan options as well. I would suspect that all of those loan options, their, their rates have increased as well. And their um, ability to long-term finance those products is not as good as solar loans, but you still have other options as a consumer in this very, very interesting time that we live in of increased rates. All right, number two, supply chain issues. Now, we've seen a lot of supply chain issues that were related to COVID and a lot of the factory manufacturing shutdowns. That's not necessarily what we're still seeing today, although there are still some parts of the US where those uh, supply chains have not yet caught up with the supply demand from customers due to the shutdowns during COVID. But now we have a whole nother issue at hand. We have trade embargoes with, with countries. We have uh, union strikes. We have uh, shipments and shipping containers for overseas that many of our panels will come in on that are just sitting there on docks, basically collecting dust. All of this congestion of the supply chain is creating your basic supply versus demand issue with the market. So if you're in this market for going solar, 
then the companies that you typically deal with just have less supply of solar panels that they could offer you. Now, we've also seen some of these big, large national solar companies swoop in because they have a lot more money um, available in their pockets and they'll just buy up all of the solar panels for a certain manufacturer or certain model right out of the market. And so it kind of leaves us, the smaller businesses, the local solar companies with very few options for our customers or they've bought up so many of these panels that now the panels that we're able to get our hands on have a price increase to us, which we then need to pass down to our customer, unfortunately. So there are a lot of issues with supply chain right now that are still prevalent, and, and I see this taking another two or three years to level itself out. But what we're really looking at now is a basic supply and demand issue. So if you give us a call and we quote you on certain panels, uh, maybe panels that you have a preference towards, and then we're not able to get those panels, you know, three months down the line when you uh, choose to go solar with us, we'll just requote you. We'll try our best to give you a like for like, but ultimately it could be that the panels that you want are just not available or they're available, but at a substantial cost increase to you. We try to avoid that at all costs. And really that is just a reaction that we have to have uh, with this really crazy supply chain uh, market that we have right now on all things solar. That includes your modules, your batteries, your inverters, and everything else that goes along with your system. Number three and lastly is inflation. So we've seen record high inflation this year, and that is driving the cost all across the board from uh, consumables, materials, labor. We have seen a substantial uptick in the cost of all of these things that ultimately end up get passed down and cascaded down to you, the customer, in that tail end sticker price that you look at. So what are we seeing with inflation? Well, with labor rates, we still have a very competitive labor market right now, but because the cost of living is going up and we try to be very fair to our team, we are going to give them pay raises to help offset some of that impact to them and their families because they still have bills to pay and they have families to feed and they have mortgages to pay. Also, we see increase of uh, the cost of manufacturing. So manufacturers have gone out there and now the cost of their uh, materials has gone up and then the cost of their manufacturing and ultimately the distribution of that product goes up as well. And then we end up having to pass that cost on to the customer. So inflation has played a major role in this, but that's not going to be around forever. So I don't see inflation sticking around at this high rate and at this current trend for the long term, but it is going to impact the cost of solar at least for the next two to three years. In addition to that, let's not forget about the government stimulus. So there was that bill that was passed earlier this year, which provided a 30% uh, tax incentive for you, the homeowner, for going solar. It raised that ceiling from 26% up to 30%. And that's great news for you. That's going to save you some money there. And that's going to be around for the next 10 years or so. So that's going to be a really good opportunity for you to save some money but they've also created some additional stimulus and incentives for manufacturers. Well, what happens with, with stimulus is that those manufacturers then begin to raise their rates because they want to make more capital investment into their manufacturing, expand their capacity to manufacture, which means that they have to come up with more capital, more cash basically to make those investments in their business. So what they'll do is they'll take their current supply, they'll raise the price of that material or of those products, they'll pass those prices on to us, which we then have to pass those price increases off to you, the customer, but then it gets more capital into their hands so that they can make some of the larger investments that they want to make. So the long story short here is that solar prices have gone up exponentially over this last year alone. And unfortunately, I don't see those prices coming down anytime soon. So if you're looking to go solar, what can you do about it? Well, number one, you can decide that you want to just put off going solar for the next two or three years. That's a completely viable option. And if those electric rates aren't killing you now, it may make sense to wait a few years for all these things to level out. However, if you see your electric rates continue, continuing to go up, then you may want to consider just biting the bullet now. Pull the trigger now because if you wait around too long, it's just going to be more expensive later. And then in the meantime, you're going to be eaten up by all of those uh, energy rate increases that we're also seeing across all of Texas. Lastly, and what we always encourage our customers to do is to get competitive quotes. 
Never just go out to one solar company and just get one quote and that's it. I always recommend with customers get two or three, at least two or three competitive quotes. That just helps keep the playing field as level as possible, helps you understand what exactly are you paying for and what are the differences depending upon the solar provider uh, that you choose to go with. Now within the competitive uh, quote space, I have another video that I will link below where it really breaks down what are those different things that you need to look for in, in a competitive uh, solar proposal and then make sure that you're making the right decisions for you and your family based on your energy goals. All right, folks, that about wraps it up for today. Thank you so much for joining. Please drop a comment below and let us know what's holding you up from going solar. And don't forget to reach out to us. Give us a call, check out our website, email us. We love hearing feedback from customers and we can't wait to hear from you. Thank you and God bless. Thank you.